So it's been a couple weeks since the PlayStation Showcase and honestly a lot of people left feeling very disappointed. I mean, honestly it's understandable being that there was a lack of gameplay in these footages and the amount of CGI trailers are, man, a little bit overwhelming. But Sony did announce two new bits and pieces of hardware. One of them being PlayStation earbuds. They're basically designed to be lossless audio that are compatible with both the PlayStation 5 and PC, and I'm pretty sure other devices as well. And they announced also Project Q. Now Project Q generated a lot of buzz because it is PlayStation's first portable device since, well, the PlayStation Vita, but it's not really a portable device. I mean, it's not like the PSP or the PlayStation Vita where you can go ahead and play games on the go. Rather, it's designed to stream your games from your PlayStation in remote play fashion. Meaning, as long as you have a PS5, and usually as long as you're in the same network, you can definitely stream your games to your Project Q device, which kind of resembles a Wii U, if you know what I'm talking about. The Wii U was made where basically you have the console, and yes, the Wii U gamepad works also as a second screen, but you can also stream those games directly to the gamepad and use that as a second screen so that, for example, if somebody was using the TV and you wanted to play a game, well, guess what? You can use that Wii U gamepad to do the same thing. Now, Project Q is getting a lot of hate really because we can already do these things already. There are already native remote play apps available on your phone or on a PC or Mac or even on the Steam Deck. Steam Deck has a third party app called Chiaki, but it kind of does the same thing. If anything, it actually does it a little bit better. I tested out Chiaki, I played around with it, and honestly the latency there is almost non-existent. Where on my phone, every now and then I can kind of get that latency, but it's not too bad. But really project q is it's interesting because there's a lot of things they can do with it and if they're just trying to sell this as a remote play device i do feel it is going to fail so before i go into exactly my thoughts on project q i do want to read you the specs of what project q is project q is going to have an 8 inch 1080p 60 hertz display basically the way it's designed is the display is in between what looks like a dual sense like cut in half but you can also see two buttons that are really next to the display, which I'm assuming are gonna be the buttons that are gonna be used for like your trackpad buttons. For example, a lot of times the pause button is designated to like the trackpad button. So like on the right side of the trackpad, if you press it in, it'll pause some games, or sometimes it can bring up the map because the DualSense really doesn't have a select button or a back button or a minus button or whatever you wanna call it. You know, I'm from the OG, ver the OG generation of gaming, so we're gonna call it the select button. But you know, PlayStation DualSense doesn't have that. So Project Q looks like they have that there. Not only that, it looks like there's LED lights right by the thumbstick and the face buttons and the D-pad, which is kind of cool. So you can kind of see that lighting going around. Now, I don't know if it's kind of like for effects, because if you all remember with the Nintendo Switch OLED, when that was announced, it made it look like once you dock the switch into the dock, the little like switch logo would appear on the dock. And we found out that no, it was just effects that were played on there. It was just, yeah, it was very misleading in my opinion. Cause I, when I first saw that, I was like, oh wow, that's pretty cool, it can do that. But I don't know, this looks like it's actually part of the device because when you look at the trailer, when they're showing off Project Q, the light where the light is originally on the PS5 is there. And then of course you have this light right around Project Q. So I don't know, I guess we'll have to wait and see what that is, if it's legit or not. But it also rumored to have three hour battery life. And honestly, that's really all we know about Project Q. There's not a lot of stuff to know about. Like we don't know if it's gonna have 5G capability to allow you to stream. We don't even know if it's gonna allow you to stream outside of your house because all they said was it was designed for remote play. And re remote play does work when you're not on the same network. But for the most part, we're all thinking it has to be on the same network, kind of like the Wii U gamepad. So my thoughts on what Project Q has to do to succeed is A, it cannot be just a remote play device. And honestly, that's where all the negative feedback is going. It's like, why would you make this device just for remote play? You see, I, I'm kind of thinking that Sony's smart and they're not just going to put it for remote play, but rather they might add some other things. For example, they might add its own native PlayStation store where you can download maybe older games, right? Like PS1, maybe PSP, maybe even PS2 games. 
and also allow you to stream like PlayStation 3 games because you know we can already stream games on the PS5 so why not bring that streaming technology directly to Project Q so that you know for example if you go on the go you can go ahead and stream these games kind of like you can do with Xbox Game Pass right I mean I can see them doing that but at the same time I can also see them not doing that if you know what I mean because they have made some weird decisions lately but Project Q has to be more than a remote play device not only that utilize this display right what if i want to use this as my controller like i did with my wii u gamepad allow me to go ahead and use the second screen so i can put my inventory there i can have my map there at all times or anything like that honestly i think if they can somehow utilize that second display and use it together with a ps5 itself that might bring up a lot of possibilities I mean, when we really think about it, if the Wii U was marketed without the gamepad, it was marketed as more of a higher end gaming device, and then the Wii U gamepad came along separately, I think it would sell pretty well because when you have that concept of being able to use your map, for example, as a second screen and just having the HUD on the TV all clean, it, it it's nice, right? You know, the 3DS kind of spoiled me with having the dual displays, and honestly, when I look at it, I was like, wow, like, you can see more of the game when you don't have to worry about a HUD being on there. And I do get it, modern games now allow you to turn off the HUD completely, but if you still wanna access like a map for example, well guess what? You have to go ahead and go into a menu or do something like that, where in this case, if Project Q can be utilized as a second display, we can just look down and view our map at the bottom. But yeah, personally me, I'm probably gonna pick it up just for their channel, and I mean, we still have to wait to see what else they announce. I do hope that, you know, they go beyond remote play. It's not just a remote play device. Remote play is neat. I utilize it a lot because like I said, you've heard me say this on the podcast many times and in some of my older videos, I do tend to stream a lot because what happens is I have my consoles downstairs and because I don't want to bring them back upstairs, you know, go back and forth with my consoles, I usually do remote play or I'll do like Xbox Cloud Streaming or I have my Steam Deck, right? My Steam Deck, I can play any of my PC games on the go or on the fly or in bed or whatever you want to say, I can do that with a Steam Deck. It would have been better if Project Q was just like a portable PlayStation 4 because if they can just go ahead and release to say like, well, God of War Ragnarok is already on PS4 and PS5, but let's say Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, or Rebirth comes out. They can release a PS4 and PS5 version, but their PS4 version is technically the Project Q version so that you can go ahead and play it on the go, right? A lot to optimize depending on the device you have, which there puts us in almost PC territory or actually Nintendo Switch territory because a lot of Nintendo Switch games run that way, right? It knows when it's in portable mode and it knows when it's you know, connected to a dock, connected to a TV or anything like that. So that would have been nice if they did something like that. But unfortunately, we don't know if they're gonna do something like that or rather it doesn't seem like that's likely. It's just gonna be a remote play device. Hopefully we can go ahead and play you know, native PS1 games and even PS2 games on there and allow us to stream PS3. I would be happy with that as a, another device. And hey, if it runs its own OS, you know what's gonna happen, right? The modding community is gonna be all over it. <laughs> but let me know in the comments below what you think about Project Q. Are you excited for it? Are you kind of like, eh, this is kind of lame. Like, why did they make this anyways? You know, just let me know in the comments below what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us over at Twitch. We do stream three days out of the week. And don't forget to catch our podcast every Sunday where we talk about all the latest, greatest gaming news and everything in the gaming industry. My name is James from The Random Encounter, and we will see you next time.